Hey everyone! So today I'm going to show you how to do a run cycle in a Hollow Knight style. My goal is to show you that even if you're not the best artist, you can still make great looking player characters for your own game. We'll be using Photoshop and Unity just like Team Cherry did when they made Hollow Knight. I wanted to make this tutorial beginner friendly, so there's some overlap from my last tutorial. If you want to skip ahead, there are timestamps in the description. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Okay, with that, let's jump right in. To start, let's open up a new Photoshop project. Name the project whatever you like. We'll set the width to 300 pixels, the height to 500 pixels, and click OK. Let's make a new layer with Control or Command Shift N. Next, we'll delete the background layer by unlocking it and pressing delete. Let's make a temporary background for our workspace by clicking the new fill button in the bottom right. Select solid color and choose a background color. Now would be a good time to drag your player character into your project. If you're new to Photoshop or if you don't have a player character already drawn out, don't worry. I have a tutorial on exactly that. I'll put it up on the screen somewhere so if you want to, you can follow along exactly with me, step by step. So our next step is to rotate our character. If you take a look at Hollow Knight, you'll notice that he doesn't rotate the full 90 degrees into a profile view. He also rotates more than a three quarter turn, so we are going to rotate our character in a similar way somewhere in between. First, let's copy our paths over from our other project. I'm going to start rotating my character by starting with the head. Let's imagine our character rotating to the right. His mouth will move to the right and get a bit more narrow from the change in perspective. Okay, I'm happy with this. Let me quickly recap my workflow for you. First, I edit my path until I'm happy with it. Next, I stroke the path by selecting the brush tool with B. I make sure I have a brush with 100% hardness selected. I then make sure the size is set to 6 pixels or whatever outline thickness you've chosen for your project. Next, I make sure I have black selected as my foreground color. Now I can go back to my pen tool and select my path. I make sure my head outline layer is selected and then I right click my path and select stroke path. Next step is to fill in the color of the head. For this, I select the head outline layer, grab the magic wand tool with W, and click inside of the head. I expand my selection by using the expand command, which I have hotkeyed to F5. I make sure to grab my head color with the eyedropper tool. I switch to the bucket fill tool, and with the head color layer selected, I click inside of the head. Okay, so that's my basic workflow for creating my character. Once you do that a few times, you'll get the hang of it. I'm going to repeat those steps for the rest of the character. So I thought I'd leave this part in and speed it up so you can at least get a feel for what I'm doing without this video being an hour long. There are a couple things I want to note. It's important to consider the perspective change when doing rotation. For instance, the eyes and buttons go from perfect circles to slightly oval shaped. Also, my character's left arm moves its way up the layer hierarchy to be on the outside of the jacket, and I also added a sleeve on top of it. 
Lastly, rotation is probably the trickiest part of this all, so just take your time and practice. Okay, now let's quickly set up our animation workspace. We'll head to Window and click Timeline. This will open up an animation timeline. Click Create Frame Animation. This is where you can see every frame of your animation. Set the timeline to loop forever and set the frame duration to 0.08 seconds. Now, we can select new frame to create our second frame. This is a good time to test out our rotation. Let's select the first frame and drag in our character in his front facing position. In the first frame, be sure to have only the front facing version visible. And in the second frame, show only the rotated character. Now we can quickly flip back and forth between the two and make any adjustments needed to really nail the rotation. All right, now we can get to the fun part and actually animate a run cycle. I would highly recommend sketching out the animation before trying to do any real animating. We'll be doing a four frame run cycle, starting with the kickoff pose, followed by the up, contact, and passing pose. Let's delete our second frame and also delete our front facing character. On an empty layer, I'm going to do a rough outline of my character in a kickoff pose with a red brush. Let's then make a new frame and duplicate our layer we just drew on. Erase the arms and legs and redraw them in an up pose. Also, don't forget to set the new layer as visible on frame 2 and the old layer as visible on frame 1. Next step is to draw out our contact post. We're going to keep moving along with the same workflow, duplicate the most recent layer, erase the arms and legs, and redraw them in the correct pose. And let's do this one more time for our passing pose. So the four frames of the run cycle is really only half the motion. I'm going to draw out the other four frames to finish the animation. On the first pass, I'm mostly focused on the legs. You can tell the arms look all wonky. <laughs> so I'm going to do another pass on the arms. Take your time with this part and really focus on one thing at a time. If you really want to refine your animation in this step, add a little height to your up pose and lower the passing pose slightly. Like I mentioned, really take your time with this step and make sure you're happy with your animation. All we really have left to do is to draw our character over our draft. I'll quickly show my finished draft in slow motion here if you want to copy it. Okay, so now let's bring our character to life and put him in the same position as each of our draft poses. For this, I'm just following the same workflow that I went over earlier in the video. I would recommend setting the height of every pose back to normal and change it back once you're done. I also find it easier to set the draft layer opacity lower while I copy my character over it. So 
So I'll show you how I copy the first frame in detail and that should give you a good idea how to repeat the process for the remaining seven frames. Okay, this is where we're at now. Things are looking good. If you notice, I rotated my character forward just slightly. There's a few more additions we can make to add some life to our animation, and after that we're finished. First, we need to add three versions of his hair. One up, one middle, and one down. If we consider his current hair to be up, we just have to draw the middle and down hair. So here I'm just lowering the tips of his hair to make it look like his hair is falling from the momentum of his run. If your character doesn't have hair, you can always use a scarf or a cape or something to add a bit of flair. With our three different hair versions done, let's rearrange his hair on each frame. The order goes down hair on the kickoff pose, middle hair on the up pose, up hair on the contact pose, and middle hair on the passing pose. Our last step is to change his height like we did in our draft. Remember, let's lower him on the contact pose and raise him on the up pose. All right, look at that, we're all finished. I don't mean to plug my own video a million times, but if you want to know how to export to Unity, I have every step on how to do that in my animation tutorial. Okay, that is it for this tutorial. Thanks for sticking through to the end. I hope you found this helpful. I made a community Discord server if you want to come hang out, if you need help, or if you have any questions. I will put a link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.